The domain of a function is the set of real numbers that you can put as an input. So typically we think of functions like little machines. You put in an input into your function and you get an output. So this would be something like f of x is equal to x plus one. This would be a function adding one number. We could stick say f of two in it and we would get two plus one and this equals three. But in this case, we can put any number we want into x, and that's fine. But there are some cases where we cannot. For example, if f of x is equal to one over x, we can't pick f of zero, because then we get one divided by zero, and we cannot compute that. So we can't have something like that happen. So we're gonna take a look at different types of functions and the domains that they can have. So the first one is a polynomial. So this is something that looks like maybe 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Uh, maybe it's just a constant like 2. Maybe it's just something like uh, y equals mx plus b, where we have variables in there instead. But basically, it's the sum of a bunch of things raised to a power. So you could even have x to the six plus two x to the three plus x. That would be an acceptable polynomial. Now, with any of these polynomials, if you take a look at the real number line for what you can have as its domain, it can be anything. So the domain of any polynomial is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. So that just covers this entire real number line. And what this notation means is that it goes down to negative infinity and it goes up to positive infinity. We use the parentheses here and not a curly bracket, not a square bracket, because infinity and negative infinity don't have an endpoint. If something has an endpoint, then we'd use square brackets. So if we were to ask ourselves, what is the domain of this function, 2x squared plus 3x plus 2? This is just a nice polynomial. All of our x's here have whole numbers in their powers, x to the 2, x to the 1. In the case here, really this is the same thing as saying 2x to the 0. So the domain of this function is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. You can put any value of x in there and you'll get an output. So what if we have the function here like 1 over x. So the rule here is we cannot have 1 over 0. So in other words, the domain, you can write this in two ways. You can say that x is not equal to 0, or you can say it goes from negative infinity to 0. So again, the parentheses here means not including. So this means we're excluding zero, or, and we use a little union symbol for this, or it's from zero to positive infinity. So on a number line, let's just draw something like this, and let's call this point here zero. That would be like saying that our domain reaches almost zero and covers all of this area right here, going to infinity in the negative direction, and all of this area here going to infinity in the positive direction. So the only thing we can't put in for one over x is zero. We could put in any other number. Now here's something a little bit more complicated. What is the domain of x over x squared minus five x plus six? Now in order to figure this out, we're gonna to have to do some factorization. So x is gonna stay on top, but when we factor out the bottom, we're going to get that this is, well, we have to get negative five, and we also have to get to six through multiplication. So this is going to be x minus three times x minus two. Now, this doesn't really look exactly like what we've seen up top before, but remember the restriction for the bottom here 
is that x cannot equal zero. So we have to ask ourselves, which values give x equal to zero in the denominator? So in this case, there's gonna be two ways that x gives us zero as an output. We might have x minus three equal to zero, or if x minus two is equal to zero. And what that gives us is x equals to three or x equals to two. If any of these happen, we're gonna get zero in our denominator, so that's not okay. So what this means in terms of our number line, if we were to draw something like this out, uh, we'll make this zero here, we'll make that two there, and we'll make that three there. We're basically fine at this point up until we get to two, and then we can't include it in our domain. But we can include everything between two and three. But we can't include three. So what we get is a domain that looks a little bit like this. So we just can't include two and three. So in this case, the domain is going to be everything from negative infinity up to two. It's going to include everything between two and three, and it's going to include everything from three to positive infinity. So this just allows us to not have two and three in our domain. So that's how we can write the domain for this. You might also see this in another notation where you can say, uh, x is less than 2, x is between 2 and 3, and then x is uh, greater than 3. So this would be another way of writing the same thing. Just, just a few ways that we can show this. All right. Now what if we have something of the form the square root of x? So what do we know about this? We know that we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So we have a restriction on the square root of x, and that is that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So it can be equal to zero here. If we take the square root of zero, we just get zero out. That's fine. So in terms of a number line for this, if this is our zero here, then we can include the zero as we take everything up. And because we're including it, we would say that the domain of this function be from zero, including it, to infinity. So the square bracket means that we are going to be including it. So let's take this concept and apply it to something slightly more challenging. What is the domain of the square root of six minus two x? So our inside's a little bit more complicated, but just remember, we need to have six minus two x being greater or equal to zero. This, this is what we want. So basically, how would we do this? Well, we need to know through manipulation what x has to be less than or greater than. So we can do some manipulation here. Six has to be greater than two x because we're gonna add two x to both sides. Then we're gonna divide by two. And that means that x has to be less than or equal to three, or three is greater than or equal to x. So that is when we're going to run into a problem in this case. Sorry, we won't run into a problem there. If x has to be less than or equal to three, then we have a problem. I was thinking ahead of myself. So in this case, the domain of this function is going to be from three to positive infinity. So that is the domain of the square root of six minus two x. Now one more, what if we combine what we just saw in the past two, one over the square root of x? Well, if we remember one over x says that x cannot be zero, and the square root of x says that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. 
So if we think about the domain of one over the square root of x, we're gonna say that x has to be strictly greater than zero because we're basically combining both of these two together in a rule for what we need. So uh, for example, we can do one over the square root of one. That's fine, that's just one over one, which is one. But if we do one over the square root of zero, we're gonna get one over zero, and this is not good. So we need it to be greater than zero. So when we ask ourselves, what is the domain of one over the square root of two minus x, what we need to do is we need to check that this bit right here is greater than zero. So we need to set two minus x greater than zero. We just add x to both sides and we get two is greater than x. So for our, for our domain here, what we're going to say is that x has to be less than two. So it goes from negative infinity to two. So that's how we can do our domain. And on a number line, what would this look like? Well, let's say that's two right there. Then we're basically covering all of this space, not including the two. So as long as we do anything under there, we're going to get a fine domain. So let's do some problems. These are a little bit more challenging than the other ones. Well, they look more challenging. Perhaps they're not. We'll see. So in A, we have 2t to the 5 minus 5 over 3t plus 6. Well, this top part is a polynomial. So we can put anything in our domain at the top. So we can completely ignore the top at this point. What we need to figure out and show in this case, this is a lot like 1 over x. And we know that in this case, x cannot be equal to 0. So basically, our restriction is that 3t plus 6 cannot equal 0. But this is going to tell us that 3t cannot equal negative 6, which means if we divide both sides by 3, t cannot be equal to negative 2. So our domain for this function, we just cannot have t equal to negative 2. So we can go from negative infinity to negative two, not including it, and we can take from negative two up until infinity. Because the top doesn't matter, it can be whatever we want, and the bottom just says it cannot be negative two. So that's gonna be our domain. And on a number line, what would this look like? Well, let's say negative two is here. Then of course, we're gonna take all of this area, so not including negative two, but we can take everything before and after it. Now, what about b here? The square root of 2x over x plus 1. So there's a couple things we need to look for here. The first thing, we know that with the square root of x, this has to be greater than or equal to 0. So in terms of two, the square root of 2x, basically here, we need to show when 2x is greater than or equal to 0. So this is just the same as saying x is greater than or equal to 0 if we divide both sides by 2. So the domain of the top is going to be from 0 to infinity. So we already can't put anything less than 0 in our domain. It's not going to work. Now with the bottom, 1 over x plus 1, we know that with 1 over x, x cannot be 0. So in other words, x plus 1 cannot equal 0, which means if we subtract 1 from both sides, x cannot be negative 1. So in terms of the domain of this little bit right here, this says that we can have negative infinity to negative 1 union negative 1 to infinity. Now what happens when we have two different domains? So we need to look to see where the domains are acceptable for the top and the bottom. So if we draw a number line here, we know in the top that we are restricted from zero. So we can include zero all the way to positive infinity. So let's just call this our orange. Now, in terms of our green here, 
we just can't include negative one. We can go from negative one to negative infinity, and we can go from negative one all the way to positive infinity. Now, the overlapping areas here, which we'll do in blue, is everything from zero to positive infinity. So this is the domain of our entire function. So the domain of square root of 2x over x plus 1 is going to be from 0 to positive infinity. So as long as we put in values in that region, we'll be able to get an acceptable output. So this was a video on finding domains. Hopefully it helped. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them.